Well, hope you're all set now for the ball game with plenty of the crisp refresher Valentine beer. See for yourself why over five million glasses of Valentine beer are enjoyed every day. We're all set now for the Yankee baseball game, so let's go down and pick up the starting lineups. Gary Geiger, center field. Carl Yastrzemski, left field. Frank Malzone, third base. Lou Clinton, right field. Pete Reynolds, first base. Russ Nixon, catching. Clumsy Green, shortstop. Tracy Stallard, pitching. For the Yankees, Bobby Richardson leads off, second base. Tony Kubek, shortstop. Roger Maris, center field. Yogi Berra, left field. Johnny Blanchard, right field. Elston Howard, catching. Bill Scarron, first base. Fleet Moyer, third base. Bill Stafford, pitching. Our broadcast today will be joined by the Armed Forces Radio Service. Short waving this broadcast around the world to our troops, our boys and girls in service, our ladies and gentlemen in service, wherever they may be stationed. And a warm hello from the USA and from Yankee Stadium. This final game of the season will be getting underway just a little bit uh, past two. The umpires have not yet come out. They're in the dugout. Now they're starting out. Bill Kinneman will be at home plate. John Flaherty at first base. Jim Hunichick at second. And Al Salerno at third base. And as they go over the ground rules, I should like to take a moment to extend thanks to many uh, folks, to all of you people who have tuned in this season and have been so kind. And those who... Uh, have taken the trouble to write us and uh, give us constructive criticism as well as uh, letters of uh, appreciation. Uh, it has always been the philosophy of all of us here that on any given day we may say something or do something that uh, may not be uh, just exactly the liking of someone listening in. But it is also our philosophy not to deliberately do any such thing. Uh, but we are very grateful for your kind consideration. And thanks a lot to all of you. And that's most sincere. We should like also to extend thanks from the executive staff. Dan Topping, Zell Webb, co-owners. J. Arthur Friedland, secretary. Administrative assistant, Jack White. Administrative assistant, Aaron Lanier. And secretary to the executive staff. Miss Ann Duran. Great appreciation from General Manager Roy Hamey and his Secretary Francis Hanahan. Our thanks as well go to these people for their wonderful cooperation. To the director of our minor league clubs, Johnny Johnson, and his assistant Pete Callison, our former uh, statistician. The Yankees taking the field. And to their secretaries, Mary Holland, Debbie Brown, and Madeline Engelhardt. And the fellow that uh, we couldn't do without, Bob Fischel, Public Relations Director, and his staff, Bill Gilfoyle, Jackie Farrell, Tom Meany, and his secretary, Connie Fernandez. Right now, our national anthem. Job. 
Acting Stadium Superintendent Jack White, Dan Popping Jr., and Secretary Marguerite Tierney, and the fellows in the ticket department. And, of course, that's the toughest job of all, any day of the year, and World Series time especially, trying to please everyone, and they wish they knew a plan. If somebody ever had one, boy, that would be the thing. Jimmy Gleason, ticket director, Mike Brendine, season box director, secretary, Joe Bryden, Pat Taggart, and the boys who do a tremendous job in the ticket department, and the ladies, Joe Carey, Greta Neville, Charlie Egan, Henry Gunderman, Clem Jurgens, Louis Morales, Pat Lee, Jimmy Conti, John Scanlon, Frank Kalanja, Kalanya, Isidore Bystock, Frank Ettinger, Irving Mailman, Teddy Schwartz, Gus Calamari, Dan Zito, Al Candelino, Frank Greenwald, Mike Tingatella, Paul Hennahan, and special services, Bill Ackman. Fellows uh, who do a great job all year round here in the east, in the eastern sector, scouting prospects, Bill Skip. Johnny Noon, Pete Gabriel, Frank O'Rourke, Harry Hesse, Arthur Deedy, Randy Gumbert, Bill Yancey, Frank Novotel. And one man we surely couldn't do without as we travel about, making the reservations, hotel-wise, travel-wise, tickets on the road, our amiable and wonderful road secretary, Bruce Henry. And the two unsung heroes, Dr. Sidney Gaynor, club doctor, and Dr. John Kelly Guck, club doctor, nurse, Mary Dornish. Now we're ready to go with the ball game, and other people we'll be thanking a little while. Chuck Schilling takes the pitch low outside for a ball. One ball, no strike. Schilling hitting 259. Some of the Reds are here today, pitching coach Jim Turner, former Yankee coach, along with Joey Jay and former Yankee catcher Daryl Johnson. Next pitch inside. Ball two. Two balls, no strike. The 2 nothing pitch. It's in there. Two and one. The 2-1 pitch to the right-hand batter. Curve over. Strike two. Two-two. Two balls. Two strikes. And the 2-2 pitch. Curve. Swung on and missed. Strike three. Schilling tried to hold back, but couldn't. And now up comes Gary Geiger. Batting 234. Carl Jastrzemski to follow. In comes the pitch. Over. Strike one. Nothing in one. Stafford with a record of 13 and 9. Into the windup, the pitch to the left hand batter is low and inside. Stafford 1 0 against Boston. One ball, one strike. Four year station in close at third. And the pitch. Curve inside. Ball 2 2 and 1. The 2-1 pitch. Swung on and fouled off. 2-2. Two -two. two balls, two strikes. Some of them in the Red Sox bullpen are riding Yogi. Yogi turns around and points at Maris. And he'll go get it if he hits in the left center. The 2-2 two -two pitch. Swung on and fouled off. That's played off the foot of Geiger. Yogi's playing uh, Gary straight away left, and Mara shaded a little to right center. The Yogi faces the left field line. Two balls, two strikes. And the 2 2 pitch is in there. Call strike three. Came in the pitch, it looked as if it was going to be high, and it, he threw him a high sinker, actually. Dropped in for the third call strike. Now Carl Jastrzemski batting 266. Here's the pitch. It's in there. Strike one. Nothing in one. This time of the year, as ball sets in, the shadows are out on the field much earlier than 
they would otherwise be. The sun's in a different position. The one strike pitch is high and away. Already Shadows cast the catcher and batter in Shadows. Garin and the right theater in Shadow. A 1-1 one, one count. And the pitch. Outside, ball two, two and one. Two balls, one strike. And the pitch. Swung on and fouled off its plate. Count remains 2-2. Two, two. Or it becomes 2-2. Two, two. A 2-2 two, two count on Carl Yastrzemski. And now the 2-2 two, two offering. Swung on and missed strike three. Fastball is tail away from him and Stafford strikes out the side. No runs, no hits, no errors, no one left on. At the end of the first half, the first inning, Boston nothing. New York coming to bat. The golden mellow flavor of today's Valentine beer. Where does it come from? It comes from Valentine's own golden harvest. From golden grain, specially grown, specially harvested. And golden harvest hops. Costlier premium hops that vine ripen for two weeks longer than any others. These gifts of the golden harvest bring you the golden mellow taste, the naturally more refreshing taste of today's Valentine beer. So have a golden, golden Valentine from Valentine's Golden Harvest Time. Refreshing and mellow every time. Golden, mellow Valentine, Valentine beer. Next time, better make it Valentine. America's finest since 1840. It's the last half, the first inning. Bobby Richardson leads off. Tony Kubek on deck and Roger Maris follow. Tracy Stollard with a record of two and six. Right-hander. Ready to work. And the pitch is bunted right toward the mound. Stallard has it on a hop, throws to first to Reynolds, and there's one away. Bobby's been bunting a lot uh, lately, getting in some bunting practice. Now Tony Kubek comes up. Batting 274. Right-hander to the wind-up. The pitch is high outside. Ball one. One ball, no strikes. And the one-nothing pitch. It's in there. Strike one. One and one. The one-one delivery. Curve ball over. Strike two. One and two. One ball, two strikes. And the one-two pitch. Inside gets away from the catcher, Russ Nixon. Two balls, two strikes on Kubek. The right-hander's two-two pitch. Swung on, lined in the center for a base hit. Geiger up for the ball, tossing back in. And up comes Roger Merrill.
Here's the pitch to Yogi, and it's low. Ball one. One ball, no strikes. Now the delivery to Yogi. He gets away from the catcher. He got over the inside corner with it for a strike. The ball got away from Nixon and down to second. Goes two back. Fast ball. One ball, one strike. And the pitch. Swung on to high pop towards second. Schilling is under it. Waiting and makes the catch. Sides retired. No runs, one hit, no errors, and one left on. End of the first inning, Boston nothing, New York nothing. Nothing to report elsewhere in the American League as yet. While in the National League, St. Louis at Philadelphia, scoreless end of two innings, Gibson and Ferretti. Cincinnati nothing, Pittsburgh batting in the first inning, Berkey and Gibbon. San Francisco, Milwaukee, Los Angeles, Chicago later. It would appear that uh, Cincinnati may uh, work 0-2 in the opener here and possibly follow with Jay. Jay is here today. With Perky working today, it would appear that he might be the man to open the first game in Cincinnati. As we get ready to move into the second inning, Malzone, Clinton, and Ronalds will be coming up. Frank Malzone, a right-hand batter. And wait for the pitch. Here it is. Swung on. Bounce towards short. Kubek has it on a big hop. Throws on over to first in time. One away. Now Lou Clinton coming up. Batting 277. Low outside for a ball to uh, Clinton. Ball one. One ball, no strike. Stafford into the windup, and the pitch is high and inside. Ball two, two balls, no strike. No score, second inning. And the next pitch swung on and missed, two and one. Two balls, one strike. And the delivery. Swung on and missed. Strike two. Two two. Now the two two pitch. Swung on, foul back up here. Count holds it two two. Next delivery, curve is swung on and missed. Strike three. And they're two away in the first of the second. Here's Pete Ronald, batting 319. Stafford pitch is high and away. Ball one. One ball, no strike. And the one nothing pitch. Swung on. A bounce towards short. Two back to his left. Grabs it on the second hop. Throws to first in time. And the sides retire. No runs. No hits. No errors. No one left off. Out of an inning and a half. Boston nothing. And New York nothing. 
Today's Valentine beer begins in the golden west, in the land of majestic mountains and fertile valleys. Land of Valentine's own golden harvest. Golden grain, specially grown, specially harvested. And costlier premium hops. Golden harvest hops that are vine ripened, naturally mellowed for two weeks longer than any other. This golden harvest gives today's Valentine beer a golden mellow taste that's crisp, clean, naturally more refreshing. So have a golden, golden Valentine from Valentine's Golden Harvest Time. Refreshing and mellow every time. Golden mellow Valentine, Valentine beer. Next time, better make it Valentine. America's finest since 1840. The last half of the second inning, Johnny Blanchard leads off. Batting 308. Howard Scarron to follow. Ballard's pitch is swung on, foul back into the TV booth. And the old red had almost got it, but Frank LaFrosia, one of our TV cameramen, got it. That was the easiest of the year. They had a bunch of coats and sweaters lying on top of a, an equipment box, and the ball just landed there as if it was in, uh, you know, soft mud. Now the pitch. Outside for a ball, one and one. One ball, one strike. And the 1-1 one, one delivery. Swung on. There's a high drive to right center. Clinton moves over and makes the catch. One away. Now Elston Howard. Batting 349. out in the second inning. No score. The pitch on the way. Swung on. There's a high drive to deep center. Geiger gets back and makes the catch. There are two away. Bill Scarrett hitting 268. Pitching patterns will change a little bit in the series according to the two ball because of the difference in uh, dimensions of the two ballparks. Here's the pitch that's popped high in the air foul over near the Red Sox dugout. Nixon after it, the ball's out of play. The Cincinnati ballpark is longer down the foul lines, but not as deep in area. From, uh, let's say, the visiting bullpens here on out to the flagpole. One strike to count. Now the pitch. Inside, ball one, one and one. One pitch. Swung on, ripped foul back to the screen. From home plate to the center, deep center field point, Cincinnati is 387. As opposed to 461 uh, here. Although the foul lines are 366 to right, 328 to left. The one two pitch. Curveball swung on and missed. Strike three and the sides retired. No runs, no hits, no errors, no one left on. End of two innings. It's nothing to nothing. We'd like to extend our thanks further to uh, fellas uh, behind the scenes, such as uh, Clubhouse attendant Pete Sheehy, Pete Previty. Take care of the ball players and all the rest of us sometimes to ask favors of them. 
and Mickey Rendeen in the visitors' clubhouse. And the Bat Boys, Fred, uh, Frank Brunetti, and Fred Banges. To the trainers of the Yankees, Gus Mouch and Joe Sorry. Great job they've done in uh, keeping the team in shape all year. Fellows who work upstairs here behind the scenes. Joe Barraskill, a press box custodian. Bob Shepard, public address uh, announcer, whose uh, fine stentorian tones uh, we all enjoy. And the Western Union uh, operators, the chief of the operators, Howard Smith and Saul Habel. There are others uh, from the advertising agency. William S. the advertising agency. You handle the accounts of our sponsors. On the TV side, Jim McAward, the executive producer, Dom Peruccio, and Joe Gianquinto, associate producers, and of course our own Joe Ripley, a radio and TV producer, who is with us throughout the season on uh, the road and at home. Here's Russ Nixon taking a strike. As we go to the third inning, no score. I have just a few more names I want to read to you. The delivery is swung on, hit sharply by second and off the club of Richardson for base hit. So Nixon's on with a single to center. Thank Bernadette Hour, the telephone operator at 745 Fifth Avenue. Here's the delivery to Pumpsy Green. There's a high fly ball in the center. Maris under it, makes the catch. And there's one away. Ballard coming up. The pitch to the pitcher is bunted out in front of the plate. Howard up with it, bobbles it, then has to throw to first for the sacrifice. Nixon moving to second, Scarron taking the throw. I'd like to thank uh, the uh, personnel of the Allied uh, Maintenance uh, Group, Supervisor Jack O'Brien, Assistant Supervisor Bob Masterson, Jimmy Esposito, Grounds Foreman, Eddie Coyle, Chief of Ushers, Dan O'Sullivan, Chief of Special Officers, Harry, Harry, uh, or rather Henry Mundy uh, and Jack Sayette, our electricians, Joe Summers, the doorman at the office, and Tom O'Brien on the press gate. Now the pitch is swung on. It's a high pop. Boyer looking up into the sun and has it. And the side is retired. No runs, one hit, no errors, and one left on. And the two and a half innings, Boston nothing, New York nothing. The golden mellow flavor of today's Valentine beer. Where does it come from? It comes from Valentine's own golden harvest. From golden grain, specially grown, specially harvested. And golden harvest hops, costlier premium hops that vine ripen for two weeks longer than any other. These gifts of the golden harvest bring you the golden mellow taste, the naturally more refreshing taste of today's Valentine beer. So have a golden, golden Valentine from Valentine's Golden Harvest Time. Refreshing and mellow every time. Golden, mellow, Valentine, Valentine beer. Next time, better make it Valentine. America's finest since 1840. I want to thank the, the girls on the switchboard, and boy, what a job they do. Sometimes that thing gets flooded and rain out, so sometimes we make a mistake and people call up. Ruth Bayline has been with the Yankees for many pennants, many moons, and her assistants Rita Magger and Maybelle Deary. 
Cleet Boyer up, hits the first pitch to deep right field, and Fenton going back, he grabs it right at the barrier to take a home run away from him, and there's one away. Outside the stadium, the police department, New York City. Larry McCarney, Assistant Chief Inspector, Deputy Chief Inspector Jim McDonald, Lieutenant Barney Toner, Sergeant Joe Greeley, Huey O'Neill, George Fishman, Patrolman Mike Shine. Nat Cohen, the stadium club personnel, and the stadium club itself, Duke Dusenberry, Vic William, Bill McHale, Bill Cohen, Artie Weir, Otto Shoren, A. Brody, Morris Heck. Our own special officer, Saul Roswitzki. The pitch swung on foul back up here. Frank Canine, Eddie Constantino, Margot Coletti, Alberta Salzman, Betty Sheridan, Edna, Edna Haney, Pat Nobles, Catherine Hanley, Edna Meal, and Margaret Crew, matrons. They are all uh, hard workers. There's a bouncer to short. Green up with it, throws on to Runnels. And they're two away. Stevens people, Frank, Joe, Hal, and Billy, and no finer people anywhere, and fellas like Phil Goldsmith, Jack Doyle, Omero Caton, Joe Canessa, John Morley, Sam Sanders, Sam Tager. I hope we haven't forgotten anybody. There's a lot more of them, you can be sure. Bobby Richardson takes it inside for a ball. A lot of folks back behind the scenes that help uh, in the operation, trying to make it as comfortable as possible for you people here at Yankee Stadium. The next delivery is low outside for a ball. And of course, my own uh, personal thanks, as I know uh, Red and uh, Phil will express them or in their behalf at the moment, to Joe Cooper in his first year as our technician. Pitch is high and inside for a ball. He can make it or break it if he wants to. But he's a real great guy. And Bill Kane, in his first year, has done a fine job as our statistician. The 2-1 pitch to Bobby. Swung on a ground ball. Hit to second. Schilling up with it. Throws over to Ronalds in time. And the side is retired. No runs, no hits, no errors. No one left off. Already told you about... Uh, Joe Ripley, of course, our producer of Radio TV, Holman Road, and my own secretary, Tilly Al Bagley. Now, somewhere along the line, we may have missed a name or two, but uh, this is a list compiled by department head, so this is the one that we had to uh, report from, and of course, I'd like to... Uh, extend my own uh, further thanks to fellas uh, like the old redhead and Phil Rizzuto. Great guys to work with. And I hope you enjoyed them very much. By the way, a special World Series column written by Roger Maris and Mickey Mantle will appear in the New York Journal American, Hearst, and other newspapers across the country starting October 1st. In the column, Roger and Mick will discuss the happenings and highlights of each game. And uh, don't forget Valentine Beer. My sincere thanks to them, of course. And P. Valentine and Sons and the R.J. Reynolds Tobacco Company. Valentine, a golden mellow taste that comes from Valentine's own golden harvest of specially grown grains and naturally mellow hops. Next time, make it Valentine, America's finest since 1840. Thanks a million to all you lovely people. We'll be going over to TV to finish up the day. And uh, again, my sincere thanks to the scooter and the old redhead. Thank you, Mel. It's been a pleasure. And the Yankees made it so easy by having an exciting season. Here's Gary Geiger, who was called out on strikes in the first inning. He swings and misses a curveball, strike one. No score in the top of the fourth. Chaffet struck out the first three Red Sox. And he faces a ground ball hit in front of the plate. Howard up with it. Throws to Scarin for the out. Boy, that Howard pounced out there in a hurry. One away. And Carl Yastrzemski, who struck out swinging in the first inning. On 
On deck, Frank Malzone. Wind up by Stafford. The fastball outside. Ball one. One nothing curve is in there. Strike one, one and one. Stremski has been striking out quite a bit here of late. It looks like he's changed his stance. At the beginning of the year, he used to hit everything to left field and left center and center. He's pulling more now, but also missing more pitches. There's a high foul out of play in the upper deck. One ball, two strikes. Stafford ready. Fastball is outside. Two and two. The two-two pitch. Outside ball three. Three and two. now on your Stremke. Stafford ready for the payoff pitch. And then time is called. Late umpire, Bill Kinneman. Calling time, waiting for your Stremke to get set. Now we're ready for the payoff pitch. There it is. It's a curve and it's over. Strike three calls. That's five strikeouts for young Bill Stafford. And it brings up Frank Malzone, who bounced to the shortstop in the second inning. On deck, Lou Clinton. Curveball pops Richardson at second base under it. And Bobby takes it for the out. It was right off the end of the bat. Red Sox go down in order in the top of the fourth. Nothing across. At the end of three and a half, it's Boston nothing and the Yankees nothing. Today's Valentine beer begins in the golden west in the land of majestic mountains and fertile valleys. Land of Valentine's own golden harvest. Golden grains, specially grown, specially harvested. And costlier premium hops. Golden harvest hops that are vine ripened, naturally mellowed for two weeks longer than any others. This golden harvest gives today's Valentine beer a golden mellow taste that's crisp, clean, naturally more refreshing. So have a golden, golden Valentine from Valentine's Golden Harvest Time. Refreshing and mellow every time. Golden, mellow Valentine, Valentine beer. Next time, better make it Valentine. America's finest since 1840. Tony Kubek to lead off for the Yankees. Tony single at center field in the first inning has the Yankees' lone hit off Tracy Salas, the big right-hander. And on deck, Roger Maris. Wind up, the pitch to Kubek is a swing and a miss, strike one. Ballot comes back with a curve, swung in and missed, strike two. Nothing in two to Tony. They were both low-breaking curveballs, down and in, below the knees. Now the two-strike pitch. Another curve low inside. One ball, two strikes. Right now, let's pause for station identification. At 1460 on the radio dial, you're in tune with Quality Modern, W-O-K-O in Albany, New York. Good sound broadcasting for 1961. Your Yankee baseball station. The time, 18 minutes before 3 p.m. Strike count on Kubek leading off here in the bottom of the fourth. Ball is ball game. Curve is low and the count is even at two and two. The 
2-2 pitch. Strike three called. The curveball caught the outside part of the plate. Second strike out to Salad, and here comes Roger Maris. Last time up, Roger hit one deep to left field. It crossed everybody up, including Yastrzemski, who made a fine catch. He was so surprised, Maris hitting the ball to left. Then he got a handful of people sitting out in left field, but in right field, man, it is mobbed out there. And they're standing up, waiting to see if Maris is going to hit number 61. Here's the windup. The pitch to Roger, way outside, ball one. And the fans are starting to boo. Maris only has, including this time, three times at bat. And unless the Yankees get a rally, that's all he'll have to try and get number 61 on the year. The wind-up, the pitch, low balls two. That one was in the dirt. And the boos get louder. Two balls, no strikes on Roger Maris. Here's the wind-up. Fastball hit deep to right. that got the ball was ushered into the bullpen by the special officers who were situated out there for such an emergency. And they will not take the ball away from the youngster, but he will get yards and yards of publicity. Whoever got that ball is going to become popular and famous overnight. Pitch outside, one and one to Blanchard. The fans are still buzzing. Hitting 61 home runs. Swing and a miss. Strike 
right to and on the scoreboard it says Maris is 61 homers break Babe Ruth's 1927 record for a season curve is high and it's a 2-2 count what happened was that the youngster that got the ball was ushered into the bullpen by the special officers who were situated out there for such an emergency they will not take the ball away from the youngster, but he will get yards and yards of publicity. Here's a 2-2 pitch. High pop-up. Pete Runnels is in foul territory. Under it, and Runnels takes it. For the Yankees in the bottom of the fourth, one run. On one hit, but one ahead. Harris is 61st pop-up. And look for the hand Harris gets as he goes out to the field. No red sock. There is nobody left. The Yankees lead one nothing at the end of four. Man, what a thrill, and I'm glad I was here to see it. I'll tell you that. And as Maris walked out to center field, it looked like the weight of the world had dropped off his shoulders. He has been a very worried young man for the last month. But not anymore. the go again with the rest of the game brought to you by the Atlantic Refining Company and your neighborhood Atlantic dealer, the folks who keep your car on the go. Thank you. 
singles, one hit off of uh, Stafford in the third inning. is up now and fouls the pitch back. Strike one. The bulletin on the scoreboard. Maris, 61 homers. Break Root, 1927 record for a season. Nixon, left-hand batter, fouls the change of pace back. Strike two. Free, coaching down at third, Billy Herman, the regular third base coach, was excused to start driving uh, home to Florida. He left yesterday morning. Old Kickapoo, Rudy York, coaching down at first. It is one to nothing. Roger Maris. Low outside, ball one. The thing I enjoyed about uh, the home run, of course, I'm the great enjoyment was to see him get it. I mean, I think everybody wanted him to get it. I couldn't find anybody that didn't want him to get it, except the Celtic men, as Casey Sanger used to call them, the pitchers. Uh, One-two pitch. It is lined into left field. It's another hit for Nixon. Lopez has to play the ball on a carom. It gets away from him. Nixon's coming into second base. Lopez is up for the ball. Nixon on his way to third. He throws it into Kubek, who relays that it is a triple standard. the tying run at uh, third base with two out. Both hits off Stafford of uh, this catcher Nixon. But to go back to uh, Solid in the first inning, got Maris to hit it an outside fastball and he hit a long fly ball to left field. And he rarely hits that that way. He used to close. And then he gave him an outside fastball as the first pitch uh, to start him off in the fourth inning. And Maris laid off of it. Then he gave him a, a low outside curve and he laid off that. Then he came in for the strike zone. I draw he's behind 2-0 and in a no-score game, and Maris had his pitch short, and he knew what to do with it, and did. Here comes the green, taking a pitch high outside, ball one. I doubt if Mr. Green gets anything fast to swing at, because he is hitting eighth in the list. Tying run to third, two men are out, and the pitcher is to follow. And I'm certain that Mr. Stafford is uh, more aware of it than I am. There's a pitch on the outside wide, ball two. You know, something else may have happened in the first inning when Solid uh, got married. Out. He said to himself, I think I can get him out. Um, after all, uh, Mon Bouquet got him out. There's a curve for a call strike on the inside on the hand. Uh, Friday night. And Paul got him out yesterday. Outside for ball three. Green one. Outside ball four. Green walk. If he had swung at four of the pitches, he'd have had to uh, step on the plate, and if he'd swung at the other one, he'd have had to uh, uh, hit it off of his feet. So, base on ball, give it up by Stafford. And here is Solid coming up to the plate. And is getting a hand from the fan. He probably is going to get a telegram from a, an old uh, pitcher named Tom Zachary. Zachary was a pitcher that Ruth hit his 60th off of, and Zachary might... <laughs> Might just send him a wire and say, son, I know how you feel. They remember me a long time for throwing uh, the pitch that Ruth hit his last one on in 27, and they remember you now. You got it made. No balls, one strike. Stafford Stead, runners at first and third, delivers the curve, swung on, trickle foul, and it is strike two. Nothing. Maris is 61st. Sums it up. Stafford wants to work with another baseball. I think he had something else in mind, too, because he stood out there on the mound a long time. He's got two strikes on this pitcher. 
And then he wants another ball, and he's walking around rubbing it now. And he's letting Solid stand up there and think a little bit. Now Stafford is ready. Delivers an inside curve. Close to the head. Ball one. One and two. One ball, two strikes. One-two pitch. Curve, low outside. Ball two. The count is the same as uh, Stafford's number. Two and two. Looks like Bill's got a pretty apt number for a pitch, hasn't it? Howard's got a pretty good one for a catcher. Three and two. The two-two pitch. A curve falling and miss. That's done him in. That's all for the bid. Uh, seven strikeouts for Stafford. Uh, nobody's throwing in the Yankee bullpen, so uh, he may go another inning. Of course, they got time to get somebody ready if they want to change. Uh, no runs, one hit, two left. And uh, Sal Durante, 19 years old of Coney Island, caught uh, the 61st home run, and he's entitled to $5,000 and two free trips to the Pacific Coast, and I don't know what else is. Now the score at the end of four and a half, New York one and Boston nothing. You know, something new has been added to the do-it-yourself list. Yes, now you can clean the carburetor of your car. Remove dirt in the vital throttle plate area without even raising the hood. How? Just use Atlantic Imperial regularly. You see dirt deposits build up on the lower walls of most carburetors. In time, these deposits can affect the action of the throttle plate and cause it to feed the wrong mixture of air and gasoline to your engine. This results in rough idling, frequent stalling, and actual gasoline waste. But after a few thousand miles of driving with Atlantic Imperial gasoline, this carburetor dirt will be gone, washed harmlessly away. And for as long as you use Atlantic Imperial, you needn't worry about new deposits forming. That's why more and more people these days are using Atlantic Imperial. It's the quality gasoline that cleans your carburetor as you drive and keeps it clean. Elston Howe at first up now in the last of the fifth inning. And uh, he's got a fine average, 348. I can do a little rooting for him the year he's had. I'd love to see him pick up a couple of hits and have that tiny uh, round 350 mark. He's been in the slump this week. But he sure wasn't when the ball club was going for that center. Swings above a sinker. Change of pace to Slip down it. One ball, two strikes. Now it's a long fly ball to center in the second inning. One and two. Low outside, ball two. Uh, when uh, Durante caught the ball, there's no uh, questions about who had it, that it was it. He, went, he ran tearing back up the ramp. I guess he took some witnesses with him, or some went with him, I don't know, but... Uh, I was talking with some of the fellows in the press room before the game, and I said, well, if I were out there and I caught it, I don't know what I'd do. I'd run right out on the playing field. Make no mistake about who's got it and where it is. As a ground ball, hit the short. Pumps the green up with it, and Howard is out. One was leaning in, one-handed. One up, one away. Back to the fifth. Now we have Bill Cowan. who uh, didn't get a decision until the 6th of August. He's been coming right along. Red Sox shining big on him from the future. Uh, an inside fastball. Foul pick. Right one. I bet to Darrell Johnson, the uh, Cincinnati catcher, leaned over and said to um, O'Toole and Jay, the starting pitchers for the first two games, and Maris hit that ball, said, well, you see what not to throw him. 
Inside, let up. Ball one. One and one. Petty pushing down to third. Wally Moses pushing to first. the microphone. It looks like he's going to come out of here with Engineer Cooper and the old trapper, but it fell just short. We will conclude the sentence. A curve, foul back, strike two. I'm not Ken Rizzuto. He tries to catch him. Of course, I guess after all these years of flying, that's an instinct. Rizzuto is a tough man to get a baseball from, but if I really need it, I, gotta, I think I'll take my chances on Frank rather than trying to catch one of him. Two balls, two strikes. This is another way of getting a baseball, you know. We often wonder why people in the stands who go fighting for them, you know, can go buy one. Yeah, lots of them in the store. Fair blow outside, ball three. But of course, that's not, uh, that's, not, uh, that's not a baseball like the one you get at the ballpark. Three balls, two strikes, one out, last to the set. One-nothing ball game on Maris' 61st. Oh, yeah. goes after a curve, falls it in the ground. Still three and two. Bill Kinnaman, one of the new crop of umpires in the American League, has the duty back of the plate today, John Saturday. Established umpire down at first, James Mahone and Trickett second, and a brand shiny new umpire, Al Salerno. This is his second series. His buddy men from the Pacific Coast League. He's down at third. Worked this week. There's another curve fouled in today. Still three and two. Three balls, two strikes. And it delivers and Sharon strikes out. Appeared to be a platter around the knee. That's the third strikeout for Tracy Salad. The Red Sox infield is uh, old pistol Pete Ronalds at first. The amazing young rookie second baseman. Red Sox are just delighted with him. Chuck Schilling. Cuts up the front to green. And the third baseman is uh, by now the veteran on the ball club, I'd say. Frank Malzon. Out in left field, another fine rookie. Learned to strike zone a lot of half of the season. Paul Yosemite also started pulling. He started out as a dead left field hitter. Center fielder Gary Geiger, right fielder Lou Clinton. Three to four, yes, six pass ball, high inside, ball one. Uh, Clinton uh, leaning against the right field stands. Park uh, Boyer bid for a home run in the third inning. Curve inside, and it is ball two. Two and off. Solid pitching, Nixon catching. Right hand to deal. Low inside, ball three. Nixon holds the ball a little bit on uh, Kinnaman. Now Nixon turns turned around to visit with him. Pitch in there for the strike. There's a very close working affinity between the plate umpire and the catcher. Uh, the plate umpire will take a lot more from the catcher than he will from anybody else. Because after all, an umpire will tell you that uh, a catcher's in the best position to see whether that pitch is of anybody. That's pitch high inside, ball four. So, boy, a walk. They've just brought in uh, Sal Durante on his own TV side with Mel Allen. They got the baseball and they got uh, uh, two special police officers going around with him. He's got a lot of money, isn't he? And also they want to be said of the authenticity of uh, that little agate. He's under surveillance now. Well, here's Bill Stafford, that's 12 hit. Swing to the curve. Does not get 13. That's strike one. 
at first on the wall. Two out. Back one pitch. Fair blow outside. Ball one. In addition to the two special police officers, uh, there are uh, two other gentlemen. Uh, there are four, along with um, uh, Durante, who caught number 61. The fastball swung on him in strike two. Now, I don't know for sure whether he caught it. My eyes are not that good. And uh, he got it. And most people around him out there in the beaches, there, there was no question about, uh, about the ball. I'd heard some people say that there'd have to be a very close uh, surveillance on uh, the authenticity of the ball because they wouldn't have been surprised with what there might have been a few fans out there with a ball already in their pocket. <laughs> Ball two strikes. Salad delivers and it's a high curve. Ball two. Two and two. Pitch. Low outside ball three. Three two. Two, an automatic run and hit. Four you down at first. Strike three. Struck him out with a slider. He landed down in there. Four strikeouts for him. Ten to five. The total is one run. Maris is 61st. Two hits. No errors for New York. Uh, for Boston, no runs. Two hits and no errors. And we'll just pause for safe identification. You're in tune with quality... Director of uh, Public Relations for the Yankees is uh, over here. Well, for the story, of course, is number 61, and there are a lot of case hard fellows have seen a lot of ball games over there where you work in the first block. What was the reaction over there? Yeah. They stood up and applauded, and I've never seen that before, including myself with tears in my eyes. I got a, I got a little emotional over it. I really did. I think everybody did. Yeah. It's a very, very exciting thing, and I must say that uh, Roger reacted wonderfully, I thought, and uh, he came up in the step, and he was much more relaxed today than he was today. He hit the six years, didn't you think? I would think so. Yeah, he yeah. saw that 2 nothing pitch coming, and he, he did He it. certainly did, didn't he? Uh, 2 nothing pitch. Nobody will ever forget this day, I don't think. But here's the boy that got the ball. I imagine he's excited, too, huh? Yeah, his name is... Uh, I'm not even sure of his name now. Uh, I, I think it's Sal Durante. Uh, wait just a second, officer. Uh, is this uh, Sal Durante? Yes, yeah. sir. Uh, and you got the ball? Yes, sir. Uh-huh. So you're going to have $5,000. You're going to sit the coast twice. You're going to see the Seattle World Fair. Uh, are you excited, too? Very excited. <laughs> well, now, let's get a report. Did you catch it cleanly? Yes, sir. Uh, did you get jostled for possession of it? Pretty bad. <laughs> Pretty bad. Well, good luck to you. Thank you. <laughs> All right, sir. You said pretty bad, I know, because you could see it. I mean, of course, if you'd been out there, right, you wouldn't have won the ball, would you, friend? Well, let's go along with the ball game. Here is uh, Schilling hitting a drive out into left field on a short hop taken by Lopez for a long single. Chuck Schilling puts the trying run on. Uh, Stafford is going six, apparently. Ford went six Friday night. Terry went six yesterday. This is inning six now. Stafford is out there. This is the top of the order. Here's Gary Geiger, the center fielder, 0 for 2. one nothing in favor of um, the Yankees. <laughs> Bob Fischel, the pretty cool customer of the day. He's, he's still all shook up at that home run. And when you get the baseball right up to stand up and applaud, boys, you've do it. So they, uh, they say these things all the time. 
think the one writer over there who's got the most background on all of this, though, is Dan Daniel, who's the dean, uh, who was writing uh, uh, when Babe Ruth was going. Uh, that foul tip stung Howard's hand, and uh, they held time, let him uh, lob the ball back and forth with Tappet. Uh, Elton's all right. By the way, Richardson, you remember, had to leave the game in the ninth inning yesterday when he was slid into. Uh, he was not cut, but he's got uh, a little bruise there uh, underneath uh, the uh, ankle and uh, more of an abrasion than a cut. They didn't have to take a stitch, but he'll be all right. He's playing today. Let's serve in for a call, second strike. One ball, two strikes. Guy got left hand hitter. Sal Durante and that uh, fabulous baseball. He's been photographed now. The photographers have uh, swung around. There's some... Uh, there's a ground ball down the first. Bob Hale has just went in. I didn't see him. He's up there. He's back to first. And not in time for the double play. Hale takes a little bit of showering. The bang-bang uh, call at second, but uh, Geiger is fast. The left hand hitter. So it's the fourth play down at uh, second base. First, two back, and Geiger on by an eyelash with a fourth out. In fact, uh, in this last game, we better look around and see how they have changed anymore. It's a hail at first. Uh, Richardson is at second, two back at short, boy at third. Lopez in left field, Maris is out in center. You have another right side of two. Right field is Blanchard. Howard back to the play. Okay. We better get our minds off at 60 first, so that's already uh, in the bank now, and uh, get back to what we're supposed to do out here. We play by play. All right, one ball, no strike. The hitter is Carl Yastrzemski. He's been up twice, and uh, Tappet is standing both times. One swinging, second time looking. He swings and has a high drive out into right center. Blanchard goes over, almost in front of the bullpen, couple steps in front of the center, makes the catch. And we have two out. And the doughty, Mr. Val Jones. Dr. Yish, third baseman. Grew up practicing in the shadows of the stadium. And signed with the Red Sox and has cast a long shadow at Fenway Park. Nothing favor the Yankees. Maris did it. Tap it delivered. There goes the runner. The pitch is taken. There's Howard, and Howard can't throw. Geiger got a good jump. And in addition, uh, Baffert came down with a slow, low outside curveball. Howard had to go down to his right, and by the time Elston came up with it, he says, Well, there's no reason to throw it on there just to test my arm. I know I can throw that ball. Good to throw on base. Pitch is a curve swung on, and there's a high fly ball. Marriage, shielding his eyes with his glove. Settles under it, takes it. That's the third out, so the stolen base is wasted. No run, one hit. Marriage will hit third. And the score in the end of five and a half is Marriage one and Boston none. You like the difference, or we'll pay the difference. Atlantic Imperial, the quality gasoline that cleans your carburetor as you drive and keeps it clean, is now backed by the clean carburetor test. Take it, and without risking an extra penny, discover yourself the wonderful difference a clean carburetor makes in your car's performance. Ask your Atlantic dealer for a receipt with each purchase of Atlantic Imperial. After using 100 gallons of this fine gasoline, if you're not satisfied that it gives you less stalling, smoother idling, generally better performance, just mail the receipts to Atlantic. We'll refund the difference in cost between 100 gallons of Atlantic Imperial and the same amount of regular gasoline. You're the judge. You like the difference Atlantic Imperial makes, or we'll pay the difference. Richardson is first 
something. Jackie Farrell has just alerted me to something on all the excitement I've forgotten. Now it's his home run. Now it's his home run. There's a run batted in, which gives him 142. Uh, Baltimore finished his season yesterday, and so now it's just a new run batted in catch. Excitement behind us with a foul ball that went up. We were working on the mezzanine, and the gentleman leaning out of, uh, over uh, in a uh, box tried to catch it and fell in. Well, they're helping him out again. There's a high foul ball up by Perk Page. He's Reynolds is under it. He's got it, and we have one out. And two back steps in, and Marriott is gonna, uh, is still in the dugout. He hasn't come out to the on deck circle yet. Roger Maris is not only the home run leader, which he has uh, established, but he is now the run batted in man with 142. Jim Gentile has finished the season yesterday with Baltimore. They're not playing today. So, again, congratulations to Roger. Pitch low inside to the knees and his ball one. and miss. Change of pace. Strike one. One of them. Now the pitches and uh, Kubek punched up toward third. It's a fair ball. Now Brown grabs his throws and he beats him out for a base hit. This gives Tony two to three. Beautiful punch. And here is third. They give him a, a, a round figure of a total of 170. Uh, Richardson has 173. So now it's the RBI man in the American League. He won it with 142. Gentile finished his season yesterday. Colavito has 139. And he's playing today, of course, uh, at Detroit Minnesota. There's Rogers swinging out of the curve off of his hands and falling it into the deck. Sapita uh, and the Giants at 142, and uh, they're playing in Milwaukee. But uh, Calavito, to take it away from Roger, would have to bat in at least uh, a three to tie, and then four to pass it as it stands now. All right, one strike to Roger. One down, runner at first. Salad deals, and Maris hits to the curve and grounds it foul back at first base. All right. All sorts of excitement today. First time I ever had a fan fall on a radio box. Pitch is low inside. A change of pace. Ball one. Fellas, sit and join. Fans, of course, don't want to see him throw anything but big fat strikes. a beautiful poise with that uh, balanced stand. The pitch is a curve high outside ball two. Two and two. Two balls, two strikes. Big crowd out here and they're drawn by Marriott. Two, two pitch. Curve high outside, now it is 3 and 2. Uh, don't pay attention to the fans going, because they're... Uh, solid is, uh, I would say, pitching Roger Beautiful. Well, he's a professional pitcher. Roger is the one that's going to get something for hitting the home runs this winter. I mean, it's the pitchers or not.
Okay, pitch your pitch. Well, only missed. He's got him out. He's got a sharp serve in there. fourth inning, people are going to remember his name and let he get some satisfaction by pitching to him and fanning him the next time. I guess Myers can afford it. Won't take away any of his uh, TV appearances and other emoluments and practices that are uh, going to follow. 61st home run would mean a lot of money to him. Somebody can write a variation of that old song. It used to be a uh, man that broke the bank at Monte Carlo. Lopez, up for his first set back today, takes a pitch on inside ball one. The tall right handed delivers the curve, swung on, foul, then the lower stand, back at first, one and one. One ball, one strike. Up on the uh, scoreboard, football bulletin, second quarter, Redskins 21, Giants 14. Two down, last to the six. Strong and miss. Get the Nixon bluff the throw down to first. Two back to back. One and two. One ball, two strikes. Tony, the pitch. Fastball high inside, ball two. Two and two. Tony first with his one singles, his 170th hit. Lopez hits a foul, out of play, back around the Yankee dugout. Two and two. Sound broadcasting for 1961. This is Quality Modern, WOKO in Albany, New York, where you always hear the very best of everything. 
The time, 27 minutes past 3 p.m. Uh, Bob Shepard on the PA is giving the announcement now. Pitching batting night, Al Rennes. That means that Reed goes in Howard's spot. Reed, eligible for the World Series, uh, uh, declared so by the commissioner when Serve had to have his knee operated on. Rennes, 24 ball games, 1 2, has lost. That was a quick curve for strike. He is uh, pitching to Clinton for up in the seventh. Al Rennes. And I double out. Change of pace, swung on and missed. Strike two. Very good. Rennie pitching and Blanche is catching. And so this is a final catching uh, tune up for Blanche. And House is uh, really um, getting his squad all balanced. Third ball, though, outside. Ball one. One ball, two strikes. Hale at first. Richardson in the second, two back at short, and Boyer at third. Boyer's on the infield in this final week and hasn't had any rest. Third ball back, one second, two back at short, and Boyer at third. Boyer's on the infield in this final week and hasn't had any rest. Third ball back, one and two. Uh, Boyer might have gotten a, a, a game here or there, but Tony was out with a kick in his lap. Richardson was also out for a, a short time with a carbuckle. Breaking ball low outside, ball two. Two balls and two strikes. Two-two pitch. Ferris going on, hit down to short. There's two back over to his left, up with it. The throw to Hale is in time. Ball for Clinton. Now we have Pete Runnels. 0 for 2. Patty champion last year. And, in, and two years ago, Ted Williams knows him after the last uh, two days of the year. One nothing. Maris is 61st, is still the only score. Running for above the knees, all strike. Uh, running was uh, brought up. Middle of the season, some very good work. Change of pace, high outside, ball one. One ball, one strike. Change of pace, grounded, foul by an inch off that first base. It was close. Lopez is on right field retrieve. The outfield is Lopez in right. Maris in center and Reed in left. And uh, it's a 50-50 chance that Mattel will be well enough to play Wednesday. The latest report. Side, ball two. Curve ball, strike three. Took him out swinging. Sharp hook. That's uh, eight red socks for the fan. Stafford uh, and a wonderful uh, tune-up. Struck out seven. In the sixth innings for Ford, no runs. In the sixth inning for Terry, one run. In the sixth innings for Stafford, their final tune, no run. They also uh, had some stuff with them. Uh, Stafford had seven strikeouts. Terry had five. And Ford had nine. Don't know whether any of that is relevant material or not. Now we have Catcher Nixon, who is two for two. Swings it at a line touch term, doesn't get it. Strike one. Rust hitting 289. 
Cleveland. 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 Cle
serve is lost, of course. The reports understand the operation very successful. He took a while to get that knee ready. 50-50 uh, question about Mantle. Of course, with uh, Mickey Ailing, um, the travel date is a uh, blessing for the Yankees. There's a punt by Reed, and it's a good one. They hit. He's on. He pushed it between the pitch and the third baseman. Well, that's uh, one of the two that we have to get on for Mars to hit the eighth. Now we've got uh, Bob Hale, who picked up uh, Roy Haney, uh, secured him. That's the pinch hitter. Reserve first baseman, if anything should happen to Cowan. First hit of the Yankee with a home run. There is a base hit for him in the right field, and Reed is around to third. Still. One out, let's get the two men on. We were needed. And that's the DP raises his head. Now we have Peter Foya. It stands now with one out in the last of the seventh. Maris is the fifth hitter away. That's just what left on Peters. Walked in the fifth. One base on ball given up by Stalin. Stafford only walked one man in his sixth, and that's the fellow he meant to walk. By not giving him anything good. All right. Infield and double play depth. Boy, a right-hand hitter, solid right-handed, scores him a curve wide, and it is ball one. I see Tom Trush has moved out on deck, which indicates he's taking over for Richardson. So he uh, is out on deck for the pitcher. Pitch is wide, ball two. Two balls, no strikes. First and third, one down. Curve is swung on. There's a pop fly to the second baseman, Chuck Schilling. So we can't have a double fly. Now, um, this guarantees that Maris will hit no worse than in the eighth inning. Uh, no, Harris Press going to hit the run it. And Richardson moved out on deck, so that's what it is. So he wanted Rennett to have one inning. Jim Jim. Hitting for the pitcher in the last of the seventh. He's a switch hitter. And the Yankees think that he's a good one for the future. Starting right now. I think he's ready now. Bill Skip, Texas scouts in the eastern area, says this young man has the tools. Batting left-handed. He is two for seven. Since the Yankees brought him in from Richmond, fouled the pitch back. The law is one strike. Two outs. Last of the seven, one to nothing. Maris hitting his 61st in the fourth inning. Beautiful weather this afternoon in these early days of fall. Back one pitch is in the dirt, gets away from Nixon. Hale goes down to second base, but Reed cannot come in from third. That's a wild pitch. It uh, is a book rule on scoring as the pitcher throws the ball in the dirt in front of the plate. Or at the plate. He gets away from the catcher. It has to be ruled a wild pitch. got the attendance figures. 23,154 today. Test hits the ground foul. Strike two. And the, uh, the season's total at home paid is 1,747,726. So the highest attendance here at the stadium in 10 years. And the total attendance on the road, which is, establishes a new record, road and home, the Yankees' total paid for the year, 
3,670,864. All right, radio and television, it's still baseball. One, two, pitch. Curve high outside, ball two. Two and two. Runners at second and third, first open. Two out. He might miss inning, but he must hit in the eighth. All right. Fresh swinging from the end. Cuts and fouls it. And to the lower stand, right back of the Red Sox dugout, and that was a vicious one. Not a rocket. Two balls, two strikes. to report that nobody over there got hurt. See the wonder the way that ball went in where they're packed in. All right, two and two. Solid taking his time. Fresh at the high papa. The trust that green is going out on the grass in left field. He's under it. He has it. And that is the inning. Two hits. Total at the end of seven. One run, five hits, and no error. And for Boston, no run, three hits, and no error. Great to be with you, Engineer Cooper, Statistician Kane. Lord Willen will all be back next year. Huh? Now, Mr. Rizzuto. Uh, I've been wonderful working with you, Scooter, and I look forward uh, to doing some broadcasting with you, uh, commentating on Armed Forces Radio of the World Series. Thank you, Red. It's always a pleasure working with you. You make things so nice and easy. to three men in the seventh inning. Didn't give up a hit. Struck out one of them. Bill Stafford went six innings. Gave up three hits. Struck out seven and didn't allow any runs. So Louis Royal coming on. Getting in shape for the World Series. Arroyo is making his 65th appearance of the year. He's pitched a total of 116 in the third inning. He's 115 and lost five and has an earned run average of 2.25. Besides winning 15, he saved 27 ball games. So where would the Yankees have been without a Royal? Or Maris, or Mantle, or Howard, or, or right around the whole team. But one particular man, I guess you'd have to pick a Royal. He's pitching to Pumpy Green, who takes a strike on the outside corner. Pumpy fly to center and walks. Of course, the big news today was Roger Maris's 61st home run of the year in the fourth inning. The only run of the ball game. Pitch outside, one and one. Louis screwball swung it and missed strike two. I don't know whether Arroyo is doing this because of the Cincinnati Red Scouts are here, but he's not even taking a wind-up. There's a foul. Back in the lower deck. One ball, two strikes. A one ball, two strike pitch. Strike three, swinging. Got him on the screw, G. 
First strikeout for Royal. Renef had one and Sapp at seven. That's nine strikeouts for the Yankee pitches in this ball game. And it looks like Jackie Jensen's coming up to pinch hit. That's who it is. Jackie Jensen will be batting for Tracy Stallard. Jackie has not played in this series. First time we've had an opportunity to see Jensen. He's batting 264, has 21 doubles, two triples, 13 homers, and 66 runs batted in. And we hope that Jackie does not have another notion to retire from baseball as he did last year and threaten to do once or twice this year. Pitch to Jensen is low ball one. Jackie's had some great years for the Red Sox. Was the most valuable player one year. Royals pitch on the outside corner, 1-1. Jensen started his big league career with the Yankees. I'll never forget the spring training that Jackie joined the club. Fresh from triumphs in the Rose Bowl, the East-West game. Inside to Jensen, 2-1. One out, nobody on. The Yankees lead 1-0 in the top of the eighth. Screw ball popped in the air. The shortstop, Tony Kubek, waving. He's under it and takes it in short left field for the second out. That's two away. And it'll bring up Chuck Schilling. Struck out, pops the third and single. taking a full windup. The screwball is in there. Strike one call. Another Scroogey hit up the middle. Kubek to his left. Though is up with it. Throws him and back a second in time for the out. So Arroyo sets the Red Sox down in order in the top of the eighth. Nothing across. At the end of seven and a half, it's still the Yankees one and the Red Sox nothing. What does a truck driver think about as he drives? You know, this is a pretty good life. New sights to see all the time. Yeah, when you get back home after a long trip, they're waiting for you. Your own car, all ready to go. Okay, lady, be my guest. Gosh, I'm glad that car of mine is running right again. Boy, remember how rough it used to idle? The way it stalled? That was a great day when Harry told me about Atlantic Imperial. The gasoline that cleans your carburetor as you drive. Yeah, and keeps it clean. Now my little buggy drives like a dream. Tander is coming on for the Red Sox as we get ready to go in the bottom of the eighth inning. And for the Yankees, it'll be Richardson, Kubek, and Maris. Nichols is making his 26th appearance of the year. He's won three and lost two. He's six, one and a half, 170 pounds from Lincoln, Rhode Island. Bobby Richardson will be leading off against the left-hander, has brought it back to the box and thrown out, bounced to second, and popped to first base. Nobody's leaving this ballpark, not only for the fact that it's a one nothing ball game, but Roger Maris gets a turn to bat this inning. Maris is responsible for most of this crowd. He's been a tremendous draw for the Yankees. Even after the Yankees had clinched their pennant. Fans came out to see whether Maris was going to hit 60 or 61. And he hit his 61st today in the fourth inning. Had another standing ovation. Had to come out and take a couple of curtain calls. 
quite a sight. Now, this is one game where you won't see many ticket stubs laying around the aisles. They're all going to keep them for souvenirs. Just the same as when Don Lawson pitched that perfect game in the World Series. People have kept those ticket stubs to show to their friends and children and grandchildren. All right, Bobby Richardson steps in. Nichols swings into the windup. The left hand is fastball is high, ball one. There's a ball foul back in the upper deck and out of play. And you should have seen that scramble for uh, home run number 61 out in right field. The youngster who caught it is a celebrity overnight. There's a fly ball down the right field line. Clinton going over to his left, under it, and makes the catch. Well hit ball down the right field for Richardson. Brings up Tony Kubek. Single to center. Called out on strikes and beat out a bunch. Tony now has 170 base hits, but Richardson with 173 is the top hit man on the Yankees this year. Mantle is third with 163. And the noise for Roger Maris is coming out on deck. Tony pointed at that ball and fouled it back, strike one. is high, one of one. Harris's homer was the 240th hit by the Yankees this year, which is, breaks their record, which is an all-time major league record for a season. One-one curve is high, ball two, two of one. One pitch is swung at a missed strike two, two and two. Two balls, two strikes, one out, nobody on. Yankees one, Red Sox nothing in the bottom of the eighth. Here's the 2-2 two -two pitch. A ground ball to the right side. Nichols over. Up with it and tagged Kubek for the out. Made the play unassisted. And you know what the noise is for, Roger Maris. Looks like everybody's moved out to right field again. Well, there's a mob scene out there. Youngster who caught the 61st home run ball almost had his arm broken. Here's the windup. The pitch to Maris is high outside ball one. Nichols ready again. Third pop foul going out of play and back of the Red Sox dugout. One and one on Roger. Digging in at the plate. Here's the 1-1 one -one pitch. Outside ball two. He's thrown a three straight curveball. Two-one pitch. Pops in the air. He's 
short right field. Chuck Schilling, the second baseman, moves under it and takes it. Well, Roger Maris pops to second base. For the Yankees, nothing across in the bottom of the eighth, and at the end of eight, it's New York one and the Red Sox nothing. Our final look at the scoreboard for the 1961 season. The American League, Kansas City 2, Senators 1 at the end of an inning and a half. I've seen against fast. Jerry Lumpy homing in the first with one on. Detroit scored five runs in the top of the first. Minnesota batting. Troy tack for Detroit. Troll shot at Ramos came on in the first. Here's the 1-1 one -one pitch. Outside ball two. He's thrown a three straight curveball. Pitch pops in the air. The short right field. Chuck Schilling, the second baseman, moves under it and takes it. Well, Roger Maris pops to second base. For the Yankees, nothing across in the bottom of the eighth, and at the end of eight, it's New York one and the Red Sox nothing. Our final look at the scoreboard for the 1961 season. The American League, Kansas City 2, Senators 1 at the end of an inning and a half. I've seen against fast. Jerry Lumpy homing in the first with one on. Detroit scored five runs in the top of the first. Minnesota batting. Troy tack for Detroit. Stroll shot at Ramos came on in the first. Cleveland at L.A. has not started. The only game scheduled. In the National League, the Cardinals shut out the Phillies 2-0. Gibson, the winner for Esty, the loser. Flood homing in the seventh. Pirates lead Cincinnati 3-1 at the end of seven and a half. Hook is in there now for Cincinnati. Given for Pittsburgh. Giants lead Milwaukee 1-0 at the end of an inning and a half. Odell against Burdett. And the Dodgers lead the Cubs 3-0 at the end of four. Williams for L.A. Cardwell started Anderson in the fourth. You know, we've enjoyed bringing you another season of baseball. And speaking for the Atlantic Refining Company and your local Atlantic dealer, we hope you'll be with us again at baseball time next spring. Meanwhile, the local weather forecasts are brought to you on TV by Atlantic, and you continue, you can continue to depend on your Atlantic dealer for quality petroleum products, including Atlantic Imperial, the gasoline that cleans your carburetor as you drive and keeps it clean. Right now, let's pause for station identification. Fourteen sixty on the dial. You're in tune with Quality Modern, WOKO in Albany, New York. Good sound broadcasting for 1961. WOKO time, one minute before 4 p.m. It brings up Yastrzemski, who's over three, struck out twice, fly deep to right. Yastrzemski is a line drive base hit to right field. Lopez up with it on one hop. And Yastrzemski gets the single. That's the fourth hit for the Red Sox. It brings up Frank Malzone, bounce to short, hop to second, fly to center. Up to short center. Maris is moving under it. And Roger takes it. Two away. And it'll bring up Lou Clinton. Struck out twice, bounced to short. Lloyd. Pitch to Clinton is right at Richardson. Bobby has it. Flips to Kubek for the out, and the ball game is over, and the season is over. Nothing across for the Red Sox in the top of the ninth, and the Yankees win it one to nothing on the strength of Roger Maris's 61st homer of the year. Total 
doubles in the final ball game of the year. For the Yankees, one run, five hits, no errors, five men left. For the Red Sox, no runs on, four hits, no errors, and four men left. The winning pitcher, Bill Stafford, who has won 14, lost nine. The loser, Tracy Stallard, who has won two and lost seven. But Stallard will long be remembered in the record book as having been the pitcher that threw the 61st home run ball to Roger Maris. And no discredit to young Tracy Stallard. He pitched a fine ball game, and he threw Maris' best pitches. He's a fastball pitcher, and he tried to overpower Maris, but Roger got one to his liking and drilled it deep in the right field seat. A mad scramble ensued for the ball. The youngster that got it is famous overnight. He will collect at least $6,000 in cash and a trip to the Seattle World Fair and back. It was a thrilling end to a thrilling season. The fans loved it. They gave Maris such applause that Roger had to come out and take three or four bows. It was a great ball game, and Roger Maris was, again, the outstanding offensive star with his 61st homer in the fourth inning. Bill Stafford pitched six great innings, allowing only three hits, walked one, struck out seven, didn't allow any runs. Al Renniff pitched to just three men, striking out one of them. Louis Arroyo mopped up, gave up one hit, and no runs. So that's the story of the last ball game of the year, fans. But now I'd like to thank the fellows who helped make it so easy for me up here. First, Joe Cooper, our engineer, who did such a great job. Here's a fellow who listened to every word that Mel Red and I have had to say all year, and that's tough enough. And he's a fellow that caught our mistakes. A lot of times you say things on the air which you don't realize you're saying, but Joe listens to every word. And Joe, by the way, where are you going to be uh, when the season's over? Going right on vacation, starting tomorrow. And then after vacation, back to work, CBS. So I just want you folks to know if you want Joe's autograph, you can get down to CBS. Well, thanks again, Joe. And for Bill Kane, our statistician, the fellow who makes us sound like we know a lot about what we're talking about, digs up all the records whenever we need one. Bill, what are you going to be doing this winter? I'll be in the front office on Fifth Avenue, Bill. Uh, doing what kind of work? Well, uh, statistics mostly. <laughs> you can't get away from it, can you? No, I'm afraid not. Well, uh, you folks who heard Bill Kane do that inning down in Baltimore, he got a lot of telegrams and a lot of wires and a lot of letters, so we might have another broadcaster in the making. Well, that winds up another Valentine baseball broadcast. Now, this is Bob Delaney saying that's all for now from the Atlantic Refining Company and your Atlantic dealer who offer you Atlantic Imperial, the gasoline that cleans your carburetor and keeps it clean. And P. Valentine and Sons, brewers of the crisp refresher Valentine beer. Enjoy sunny, mellow Valentine beer along with baseball. This is the home of Champions Network. Friends, neighbors, lend me your ear for the sound.